Alright, so today we'll be going over the inspections dashboard. Um, it's a pretty simple dashboard that's really, you know, good for exporting and pulling out tables, uh, you know, into Excel for your operators to, to kind of review um, up until they get used to the, the uh, Power BI skills and the Power BI um, slicing to really get the data that you need, need to see. All right, so this is part of our um, Power BI reporting series we've done inspections uh, the environmental we talked about spill release data integrity and some of the monthly reports we have and then for the health and safety we spoke about kind of the bulk of the data model the reactive proactive efforts and kind of the customizations that are possible so before we get you know started with the webinar i kind of just want to bring up you know bring up a little bit of teams and the way that Power BI can integrate with Teams is pretty powerful. So within your own Teams channel, you actually have the ability to plug in a Power BI um, tab. And from this, you actually get the power of the report server within Microsoft Teams. So you don't have to go through too many windows to see the report. And then from there on the right-hand side, you can actually chat about the, um, about the dashboard on the right-hand side. <laughs> And if you ever need to go straight to the Power BI report for whatever reason to edit the refresh or to refresh the data set, it's as simple as going to the top right, hitting go to website, and it will actually open up a new website that takes you directly to the report, um, the report server. So the idea that you can you know kind of work through teams, work through your files and your posts, as well as chat on the right hand side about the dashboard, you know, it's a it's a small little you know quality of life improvement that you can you know, integrate with your daily life. So this won't be too long of a webinar. Um, the inspections dashboard, you know, it's, it's, it's really self-explanatory. However, there are some things that you know, you'll have to know to really utilize this dashboard correctly. So as always, um, you know, we have our slices on the left-hand side. Oh, the slicer on the left is about business unit name. So if you want to filter by that, you can. On the bottom left, we can filter by form number um, and I'll kind of explain how all the slicers work together. And on the top right, you have, you know, kind of form type name. So just as an example here, um, let's say, you know, you're a foreman working through um, your inspections. What you'd want to do is you want to open up the form type name. Sc scroll down to office inspection, for example. What that does is that will filter out all the office inspections from the table in the middle. So as you open these up, you'll notice that how many forms there are in your system. Obviously, this example only has two, whereas if you're doing a daily form, this might have thousands. So the next thing you'd want to do is you want to filter this by month. Right on the top here, you can filter by reported, by occurred, whatever you guys want to use that's customizable. And the next thing that we can do here is we can actually go on the bottom right to the bar chart and we can say no, because usually no has that negative connotation to it. What that does is that filters the form one more time. So now when I press this little plus on the left hand side, you can kind of see these are the sections that we have. Um, it's kind of showing from the inspection. So of the office inspection, these are the sections that have that no answered. And if I open it up one more time, you can kind of see the questions that um, that are relative to the answer. So, you know, outlets are a no, lighting's adequate is a no, and so on. All right. Now let's say we go and choose a different inspection. We'll choose the bunkering checklist, for example. We see how there's a bit more form types. Well, we can another method that we can do is we can actually go to the bottom left where it says form number. We can change form number to a specific form number. And you can see at the top here that um, you'll only see that two eight nine nine. And then another method, another way we can you know filter out this this table here is on the top we have these drill down functions. So if we hit this the fourth one, the fork that expands all down one level in the hierarchy, you see then these sections will open up. And then from there you can actually open it up one more time to see the questions. And from there if you want to filter by yes or no, you just have to use the bar chart just to kind of see what happens. Now while this is good to let you know the yes and the no's, you can filter that out. I think the most powerful tool that it comes with is the power to export. So from here, what we can do is we can go to more options and we can hit export data. What it does is actually it, it will 
download a CSV file. So if I open up my root, I look for data and I open it up. Like I mentioned last webinar, you can actually pull out the tables for the inspections and the form numbers. And you can start, you know, working with the data here. So what a lot of clients do, especially the regulatory ones, the ones that have pipeline checks and things like that, is we actually have the ability to look at inspections and look at checklists and look at any of the form fields. And we can then actually just take all the data into one long Excel sheet for you to export the data in case you need to report anything to a government or kind of use this as like a mailing list in Word to get any of your data fields out. So the power to export and the power to use this in Word or PowerPoint or anything you need to do is pretty huge as well. And then from there, just before I go to the next page, the one thing we'll see on the bottom left is we have form number is still equal to 2899 and the form type name equals bunkering checklist. If we go to findings using this button up top here, because it's kind of a three part checklist, you can kind of see on the bottom left that form number is still sliced and that form type is still sliced. And then if I were to open up this form type, what you can actually do is you can actually now see the findings. So if I remove this filter on top, and now we're left with all form types. Oh, oh sorry, this way. And I remove the form filter as well. What you can then see is out of all of the kind of um, you know form types across the board, if you want to look at the inspection item findings, so let's say non-conformance on the bar chart on the bottom, you can see the findings that they have. Any non-compliant, same idea. And then from there, you can kind of see the comments that your team made. And uh, the reason this is a bit easier to use in the portal is if there's an action or a finding applied to a um, to an inspection section item, it is pretty hard to find out which ones have those have those uh, comments attached to them. And same idea here, what you can do is you can actually export these findings in these categories using that same method and making sure that everything is done correctly, right? Um, so pretty simple. These the inspections and finding dashboard have some conformancy to the way that they're used. It's just as simple as using the plus and minuses on the left hand side, depending on what form type you would like to see. And if you want to get super granular, you can go down to the form number side on the left hand side and select which form number you'd like to see. And the last thing you can do is if you go to actions using this button here, it'll actually show you from the checklist itself what actions are available. So you can kind of see here. So I've showed you this dashboard twice once in the environmental and once in the health and safety. So the idea of how to use it is the same. However, the difference with these ones is if you look at the last column here, inspection section item name, you can actually relate that action to the inspection section item. So we kind of see here that, you know, review Lodo SOAP with the worker and reassess competency, you know, where all hazard defines install new flame arrestor with this one and with this form number and so on. And then you have the ability obviously to go back into the portal to make sure that these are closed out. So the idea behind this entire dashboard is that it's a simple three part dashboard, starting with the inspections, making sure that everything's been filled out correctly through hazard classification or through inspection item answers. From there, you're going to go to findings, look at all the comments that are made. And from there, you're going to go through the actions to make sure that all the actions are being completed off. And um, this is really good if you have a safety meeting, you know, once a month, you can sit down with your with your the foremans and superintendents to make sure that everything is being closed off on a timely manner and the inspections are being done correctly. Um, actually, before I finish it off, one last thing I'll show you guys is the um, the model is here as well. Um, you can kind of see it's a bit smaller than what we had for the health and safety and for the environmental. However, with the forms table, we, for example, we pull out facility and form business unit, but if you had accounts or contacts, it's as simple as pulling out those queries from those first two dashboards and just inputting them into this PBIX file and relating them to the forms. And on the right hand side here, we've done a couple of things different. We kind of relate the inspection section items to the inspection and then back into the forms table, the findings with the inform field inspection section item and the form task with that as well. Whereas before we related the form tasks tables to the forms table, and that's kind of why we split up the modules to make sure that these tables are related properly and um, everything works as intended without having to jumble everything into one big Power BI report. If there are any questions, you know, please feel free to email support at itrack365.com. 
uh, you know, reach out to us on YouTube and LinkedIn for any further questions. And if you want to test this report out yourself, you can log into our app source trial to see how um, the report plays out at a first hand experience. Um, I believe our upcoming webinars um, will be posted by the end of this week. So please take a look out for that and we'll make sure to share those. And if there are no questions, I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.